So here's the introduction to working with functions in the college algebra class. The objectives you can see there determine whether a relation is a function and use the function notation. Determine the domain of a function and use function notation to model and solve real life problems. So we did a couple of these in class. A relation is any set of ordered pairs. The first set, the first component x is called the domain. The second component is y. It's called the range. And so we set up the domain and range of this relation in class. And I will just redo it here. The domain being the x values, we are looking at 2, 5, negative 4, and 3. And the range being the set of y values, we were looking at negative 3, 7, 8, and 1. So there's our domain and our range set of x's, set of y's. Then we talked about a particular type of relation that's a function, and a relation will be a function if this occurs. Each element in the domain corresponds to exactly one element in the range. We looked at some mappings here of ordered pairs. We said that this one was a function, because each of the x values was used only once. The x values didn't repeat. The second one, the x values did repeat, so we said it was not a function. And the third one, the x values do not repeat, and so we said that that one was a function. So the observation that we made was that the x values can't repeat. In functions. Because one x can only go to one y, and if the x values repeat, it is not a function. Then we looked at these mappings. And we saw that the first one represented a function because each x value went to one and only one y value. The second one was not because we had one x value going to several y values. And the third one was a function because every x went to one and only one y value. Then we looked at how to tell if an equation is a function or not. To do that, we have to solve the equation for y and then see what happens. So the first equation, we took the x squared on the other side, subtracted it, and ended up with an equation y equal 4 minus x squared. Second equation, we took the 2x on the other side, subtracted him, and then divided by negative 4, everything by negative 4, and we ended up with y equal negative 4 plus 1 half x. Next equation, solving it for y. We had to subtract the x squared on the other side. Then, because y is squared, and to get rid of the square on the square root, we had to square root both sides. And remember, when you square root both sides, you have to include the plus or minus. So that's how we ended up with y equal plus or minus the square root of 4 minus x squared. And we're going to do the last one, solving him for y. And since y was under a square root, to undo a square root, we had to square both sides. That cancels out the square root, leaving us with y minus 3 equal 5 squared, which is 25, x squared, which is x squared. And we wrapped it up by taking the 3 over on the other side, adding it to the other side. The equation is now solved for y. y equal 25 x squared plus 3. Then we looked at all these situations. We notice that if I put a single value in place for x in the first equation, 
I will come up with a single value for y. So let's pretend that we put a 2 in place for x. 2 squared is 4, and 4 minus 4 is 0. I only get one answer out of that. If, let's say over here, I put in a 4 in place for x. Half of 4 is 2, and negative 4 plus 2 would be a negative 2. I only got one y value when I put in 1x. Over here, the last one on the end, suppose I put a 1 in place for x. 25 times 1 squared would be 25, plus 3 would be 28. I put in one value for x, and I get one value for y. The problem is the middle child. This guy, I end up with two values for y when I plug in a single value for x. Here's what happens. Suppose I put in a 0 for x. So I'll have the square root of 4 minus 0. Remember, there's a plus or minus in front of that. OK, so still having the plus or minus, the square root of 4 minus 0 is the square root of 4, which is 2. Notice I get two values when I plug in one x value of 0. So I'll get 0, positive 2, and 0 is paired with a negative 2, which means this guy is not a function. So the moral of the story is, if your problem has a y square in it at the beginning, you automatically know that it is not a function because this plus or minus thing happens and it violates the condition of a function. Moving on with more function notation, it's very important that you understand equations that you've worked with in the past had the value or the letter y as one of the variables. Well, in function notation, the y gets replaced with the f of x. But all the operations are the same. It's just a different way of looking at it. So if I put a 0 in place for x in this equation, I'll get y equal to 3 times 0 minus 5. And that's just going to be minus 5. This tells me to put a 1 in place for x. And if I put a 1 in place for x, 3 times 1 minus 5 will be negative 2. And if I put a 4 in place for x, 3 times 4 minus 5 will be 7. Finally, if I put a negative 5 in place for x, it's 3 times negative 5 minus 5. So that's negative 15 minus 5. That's negative 20. So that's old notation. New notation looks like this. Instead of you being given the x value in this table format, you will be asked to find a function value, like in this case, f of 0. That just means put a 0 everywhere you have an x. What we just did a minute ago. We get the same answer, negative 5. f of 1 means to plug in a 1. And we get a negative 2. f of 4 means plug in a 4. We get 7. And f of negative 5 means plug in a negative 5. And we get negative 20. Same answers, just two ways of looking at uh, the same equation. So what you need to observe about this in evaluating a function is you just plug in the value for x. 
So here are some in the middle for you to work on. Plugging in some values for x, we've got three different functions here for you to work with. And I'm going to pause this. I'm going to work them out. I want you to work them out. And when you're done, come back and check your answers. Okay, so here are the answers for those three problems. And then the restrictions we have to always keep in mind. Check your answers. If you did not get the answers I got, go back and work it. See how I worked it to find where your common mistake was. We, ended up, we end up with two situations where we have undefined values. Here is division by zero, can't have it, and square roots or even roots of negative numbers, we can't have that either. So those two are undefined. A common place where students make errors is right here when you have to use the FOIL method to square a binomial. Very important. Squaring a binomial, you have to write it twice and FOIL that guy out. So check your answers and then double check what I did to find your mistake. The next thing will be a set of piecewise functions. And these are interesting to work with. It's a function defined by more than one piece. So we have to decide what function am I going to plug my value into, I basically have two parts, part one or part two, or part A or part B. And if I wanted to calculate f of negative two, I've got to decide, do I plug the negative two into the first equation or into the second equation, but never into both. So this number in here, I'm going to look at and then I'm going to look at these restrictions on the end and see which one does the negative 2 fall in. Is the negative 2 a number that's less than or equal to negative 3? Or is the negative 2 a number that's bigger than or greater than negative 3? That's how I'm going to decide if I plug it into equation 1 or equation 2. And since negative 2 falls in this first category, negative 2 gets plugged into the first equation. Negative 2 squared minus 9. Well, that'll give me 4 minus 9, so the answer to this one is negative 5. You do the next three, determining which equation you're going to plug it in to, then plug it in and find your answer. So the second part, B, its value of 3 gets plugged into equation 1 because the number 3 falls into the category of less than or equal to 3. It's equal to 3, so I use equation 1. Part C, F of 5, I use equation 2 because equation 2 I'm going to use when my x values are bigger than 3 and this x value of 5 is larger than 3. Over here, the square root of 2, well, if you put that on a calculator, it's 1 point something. So f of 1 point something, that 1 point something value is a value that's less than or equal to 3, so that's why I went back to equation 1 for that one. Check your work. Check your answers. I've got all my answers here. See if your answers match up. If something doesn't match, check your arithmetic. If you use the wrong equation, make sure you understand which equation you use for which situation. Another fact that we'll need to find with our functions is determining when our functions are equal to zero. When is f of x equal to zero? And to do that, all we have to do is set f of x equal to zero. Take the function, basically throw out the f of x, and change it to a zero. So I want to basically solve this equation for x. Same thing for part b. I would replace the f of x with a zero and solve that equation for x. So we're finding out the values for x that when I plug them back into the equation, it'll give me zero. Work on solving those. The first equation solves easily, we get x equal 5. The second equation, not so easily, it's a quadratic, 
and we have to factor